So an important question then becomes, what's, where is the specificity for localization of mRNAs come from? And I want to use the example of yeast ash one mRNA, which is targeted at the bud tip as an example of that. And the basic principle is that the specificity for transporting this RNA out here to the bud tip is found in RNA binding proteins, which bind to the RNA and then uh, attach that to cytoskeletal motors. For example, in this particular RNA, the SHE2 RNA binds to the message and then interacts with a motor complex, which then moves along actin filaments uh, so that it reaches the bud tip. This is a general principle that RNA binding proteins bind to localized RNAs and then target them to specific regions. In many cases, that's by interacting with cytoskeletal motors, but in some cases, it's by interacting with anchors, which are localized to certain parts of the cell to tether the RNA to that vicinity. mRNAs can also be localized by selective degradation of the non-localized pool. So for example, mRNAs can start out distributed throughout the, RNA, the cell, but then RNAs which are not in a specific location can be preferentially degraded. Um, one example of this is the nanos mRNA, which is localized to the posterior tip of Drosophila embryos. It's distributed throughout the cell, but then degraded in the regions that are not at the posterior pole. Another important general principle of RNA transport is that mRNAs are translationally repressed during the transport process. This is important for two reasons. First, by repressing the mRNA so it's not translated prior to localization, you target the production of the protein to the specific region of the cell where you would like to produce the protein. The second reason is important is that by repressing the translation of the mRNA, you limit the interaction of the ribosome with the mRNA and this decreases the total molecular mass of the complex which needs to be moved through the cell. And this presumably greatly facilitates the transport of mRNAs to distal regions. In the case of the ASH1 mRNA, uh, we can see an example of how this occurs. Two RNA binding proteins, one PUF6 and one KHD1, bind to the RNA and then repress the loading of ribosome subunits. The fact that there are two mechanisms by which translation is repressed illustrates how important it is to keep these localized mRNAs from being translated prematurely before they reach their proper location. Now, if mRNAs are repressed during their transport, an important second principle is that their repression must be relieved once they reach their proper site. And uh, for example, in the case of the ASH1 mRNA, once the mRNA reaches this bud tip region, there are localized kinases, which are present only in this region of the cell, which phosphorylate these RNA binding proteins. They're released from the mRNA, and the mRNA can then enter translation. So the, the two general principles there to remember are mRNAs are translationally repressed during transport, and that once they reach their specific subcellular location, that repression needs to be relieved, in some cases by uh, previously localized kinases.